Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Monday, July 31st, 2017 edition of VR News. Lots to talk about. Let's jump right into VR News, starting with AMD. AMD announcing at this week's SIGGRAPH event in Boston that they are attending that they are going to be launching their high-end Ryzen Threadripper CPUs, and damn it if I don't love that name, and their Vega GPUs August 14th. Once we know a little bit more benchmark-wise, we'll revisit them and we'll talk about it here. But in the meantime, I gotta say I am super, as in really excited about the liquid-cooled RX Vega 64s. They're going to come bundled with a couple of retail games for $700 US. Now that is a hefty price tag, but it is their high end. So how does it perform? Don't have a clue. Can't wait to find out. Then next up, we have the HMD known as Neurable, which is part read your brainwave, sort of, and part eye tracking capability. Well, Ian Hamilton from Upload VR, one of the writers there, he was able to test this at the SIGGRAPH event. Neurable itself, a device from a company by the same name, on the surface, it looks like magic. It looks, oh my God, amazing. They read my brain. They know what I'm thinking. Sort of, but not really. And I don't want to belittle this and kind of compare it to a parlor trick. But in a sense, that's exactly what it is. A technological parlor trick. So it's no secret the human body filled with electricity. We've got charged ions that literally keep our heart beating and electricity electricity pulsing through our brains over hundreds of billions of biological wires. Think of this technology as basically just checking the binary state of that activity. So it measures the EEG, that's the electroencephalogram, and it basically determines if it's on or off. So if you're looking at something, if it has your focus and your attention, there's brain activity, i.e. it's on. The stuff you're not looking at, it's off. That's essentially how it runs. It's never more complicated than yes or no, on or off. And yeah, you could design a whole game around that, but you're eventually going to run into same, 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 and same. In fact, the game that Ian Hamilton tried, he's one of the writers at Upload VR, he got to try this. He was impressed. But if you break it down, not that impressive. It's cool, but I wouldn't call it amazing impressive. Way more amazing for me would be the eye tracking, which while Ian was trying this was sadly disabled and not quite ready for prime time. I think that is probably the cooler of the two. The first, like I said, neat, but does it have real long legs? Is it going to get you far? No. Next story, Gunheart, a multiplayer first-person shooter from industry veterans Epic Games, releasing today into early access. That early access is going to feature both cooperative missions and multiplayer PvP battles. It's also going to use, which pretty much now is standard, teleportation and a smooth locomotion option. You can purchase it, $34.99 US on Steam, for both HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. I love this next story. Anything that can give people in the health and medical fields hope, patients, doctors, I am all for. And it's one of the ways that I love seeing virtual reality diversify. And by that, I mean VR again, proving itself a benefit to the medical industry. This time we've got a University of North Florida student and assistant professor, Jason Smith, creating an app he's calling VR VISU. That's VR V-I-S-U. It's going to allow doctors to examine cancerous tumors in VR to get an accurate, scaled visual of what that tumor looks like and potentially what stage that cancer is at, what that tumor could be impacting and how they could go about 
eliminating it or if they could in the first place. So just very, very cool. This was all part of a News 4 story, which I guess is a local channel. I'm not too up on, on who they are, just that they're a news channel. He was shown wearing an HTC Vive, but not using their tracking technology. Instead, the hand tracking appeared to be done via the leap motion sensor. For me, I have such respect for doctors, anybody in, in the health and you know medical industries. The Hippocratic Oath is something that most doctors take absolutely seriously. Is there any bigger example of that than this story where literally you've got an individual not waiting for technology to catch up and somebody else to write the application. Instead, he writes it himself. Very freaking cool. This next story, I wanted to dive a little deeper into this. It is Sansar launching today from Linden Labs into what they're calling a creator beta. Let's take a look. So if you weren't aware, the idea behind Sansar is it's going to offer a multiplayer world or set of worlds that you can explore. Summer worlds, you're going to be charged a fee for exploring and more on that in a bit. But whether you've got an HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift, the worlds are there for you to explore. So like I said, today they're launching the Creator Beta and they've got a couple of videos up where they're looking at Creator profiles. One of them, the one that I have up right now, is of Creator Anric. So he's built this kind of mystical monkey religion type set of ruins, something you would uncover in a jungle somewhere. And in it, he's put some modern amenities, sports amenities. So you can play some sports games here. Each of these worlds can host up to 35 people. Once you go over that number, it kicks into an instance mode. It'll spawn another instance of that world, which again can host up to 35 people and so on. And that's, I guess, where the servers come in. And again, we'll get into that as well, too. So it's free to visit and explore some of these worlds. Some they're going to charge. Here's the pricing model. So let's break this down. So you can see on the far left, the free quote unquote model that allows for up to three worlds. So a creator can create up to three worlds they get basic, basic email support only. Next column, they can create up to five worlds for $9.99 US per month. They get slightly better email support. The third super creator allows for 10 worlds at $29.99 US per month, 24 hour email support and a live web chat feature. And then the most expensive is what they're calling their professional creator allows 20 worlds, live web chat, and a one business day return time via email. Again, that one affording 20 worlds that can be created. So the idea here is that the creators themselves have the ability to sell, rent, or charge for access to their creation. So what do you guys think about this model? The idea here, as I see it, is no matter what, Linden Labs, they will make their money, the money that they need, rightfully so in one respect, to keep the whole thing running, the server space, the resources, etc. The creators, they're the ones gambling. It's really gonna be up to their design and creation chops if they can create something compelling enough to have people pay for it. And that's only the first part. Then they gotta have enough people to pay for it at the right price to turn a profit. So on the surface, I got no problem with this. Like with Altspace VR, a lot is gonna depend on the install base. Unlike them though, they at least seem to have a basic revenue stream model figured out. So yeah, it'll be neat to see and follow this. Probably one to revisit three months from now, six months from now. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So I mentioned the SIGGRAPH going on right now in Boston this week where you've got video card manufacturers, you've got developers 
game companies, all of them kind of coming together. Well, OptiTrack, one of the companies in attendance, and they're the guys behind the technology powering the Voids, Ghostbusters experience, for example, and a bunch of others. They've just announced that they're going to come out with their own tracking puck. Looks a little bit like the HTC Vive one, but in a retracted position if the HTC Vive had four nubs instead of three. But the same basic idea. So you put one on each hand, each foot, you get full body tracking. That's where they're going towards. They also want to include some type of leap motion finger tracking. So in addition to full body, they would have full finger as well. The problem with their technology is it's all based on the backpack PC model. No matter what they come up with, that gets written into the game or experience that you've got a backpack. And the reason you have a backpack is because of your Ghostbuster or whatever they come up with. So very cool on the surface, no price or shipping date for their tracking pucks as well. I love seeing the evolution of technology like this. They're kind of competing with HTC Vive because I know HTC is branching out into the arcade space as well, but OptiTrack themselves don't seem as interested in the home consumer space. So again, this will be an interesting one to see three, six, nine months from now. All right, guys, and this last story, definitely schlock worthy, which is to say a little frustrating. If I would let them, Sony and their bizarre marketing could absolutely drive me bonkers and too freaking distraction. Here's, here's another example of why. So if, guys, and only if you live in Taiwan right now, if you live in Taiwan, you can purchase for yourself a standalone aim controller. Never mind that they can't be found in the wild anywhere on the planet, but in Taiwan, you can buy them standalone. If you do the conversion, it works out to about 62 bucks US. Not a great deal at all, considering the Farpoint bundle with one is about 79 US. In other words, you're getting the game for about $17 US more if you could freaking buy the bundle anywhere, but you can't. And it was released for what, an hour in four stores and then gone. So yeah, sarcastic guys, absolutely. Bitter, jaded, check, and check. They drive me nuts. Why, for example, did they not just do a limited run I mean, even if it was whatever they made for Taiwan, make a bunch of the aim controllers, slap them in some boxes, spread them around the global market, you know, the rest of the world, and see how they do. If they do well, make more. If they don't do well, don't make more. But at least give people an option, aka a choice, which right now, with them not being found anywhere, doesn't exist. Anyways, we'll leave it at that. Guys, that is the Monday edition of VR News. We will be back tomorrow. Have a great Monday evening. Cheers, guys.